You look like really sad. You all right? Okay. So, um, Malik, the one important thing, though, when we're talking about using Pythagorean theorem is we need to make sure we have a couple of pieces of information for Pythagorean theorem. First of all, we have to make sure we have a right triangle, right? I showed you guys up there on that worksheet. You have to have a right triangle. And for us to have a right triangle, Taylor, we have to have a right angle, all right? And a right angle, remember, is represented by our 90 degrees. So exactly how they represent this as well, our right angle directly across from that is what we call the hypotenuse. Now, in the, in the formal um, or in the, the way that we per use the Pythagorean theorem, we like a lot of times like to call the hypotenuse C. OK? So we're going to call this C, and then we're going to call the two legs A and B, where the two legs are going to make up our 90 degree angle. And if you remember, what we learned at the beginning of the year is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. All right, where the two legs squared added up together equals our hypotenuse squared. Okay? Can you please put that? Oh, do that back to the This is not what we're doing right now. Does that make sense? All right, that? Okay. So now, well, they provide us, they say that C is our hypotenuse. So we can say 11 squared plus B squared equals 15 squared. All right? And again, what we're going to be trying to do is, again, solve this. But we want to find this in our radical form. So 11 squared is 121 equals 225. All right? Now to solve for b squared, I subtract 121. And I have b squared equals, uh, what, 104? Now again, it says to use the square root um, or to leave it in radical form, all right? And which we'll go over a little bit more um, as well. So now I go ahead and take the square root. And now we need to take the square root of 104. But they said leave it in radical form, meaning I don't want you to take your calculator and just take the square root of 104 and give me the answer. I want to leave it in simplest form. So in simplest form, what we need to do is write down all the square numbers that we know. 16, uh, 25, 36. 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144, 169, 196, 225. The reason I know all those up to 15 times 15 is because, yes, I use them a lot as a math teacher. And what I'm telling you guys is these should be very familiar to you at least up to 100, OK? You should know all of these square numbers up to 100. 64, 8 times 8, right? The square root of 64 is 8. The square root of 36 is 6. The square root of 100 is 10. You guys should know at least to 100. Preferably, you should at least get up to 15, all right? But I would probably say you can be pretty safe in this class if you know at least up to 100. Anything higher than that, you, you, know, you probably have your calculator as an 8, all right? So what we want to do is we want to determine what is the largest number that divides into 104 that's one of these numbers. Well, obviously, it can't be 225, 196, no, 169, 144, no, no. So we say, all right, does 81 divide into 104 evenly? No. Does 64 evenly? No. Does 49? 49 times 2 would be 98. No, right? Um, you could do 36. 36 times 2 is 72. Add another 36, that's going to be 108. Close, right? It's almost there, but it doesn't evenly divide. 25 obviously doesn't do that. Um, 16 would be 32. So we know 32 <coughs> plus 32 would be 64. Um, and if you keep on adding in there, 16 is not going to work. And if you, let's just even plug in my calculator. 104 divided by 9, that doesn't work as well. But when I go ahead and try number 4, 4 actually divides into 104. And the way that it divides into it, 4 times 26. So what I do is I write it as a product. And what I want you guys to understand is 104 the same thing as 4 times 26? Is it the same thing? Yes, it means the exact same thing. But now, can I take the square root of 4? Can I take the square root of 4? Can I find a number that multiplied by itself gives us 4? Yes. 
Yes. Is there a number multiplied by itself that gives us 26? No. Two. 26. No. We know 4 is 2. Can we do a number for 26? No. no. Can I divide any one of these numbers into 26? No. 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 So to guess what? The 26 stays under the radical, and the 2, or and the 4, turns into 2. And that's going to be your final answer. Okay.